Hi, my friends. Back in the same garden. Birds are singing. I'm enjoying life right now. I'm enjoying the peace of God. Um, let's continue a little bit about, uh, because I'm going through the book of Acts. And I love that book, as I said yesterday, one of my favorite books in the Bible. And it's always something new. Um, I want to clear something up when it comes to uh, what it means to be sent. Bible speaks about uh, he sent an angel, he sent Peter, he sent John, he sent people to different places, to nations, to cities, to houses, to churches. And it looks to me that some people in the body of Christ has interpreted that word sent with, if you're sent, you are an apostle. I don't think that's exactly right, to be honest with you. We have the fivefold ministries, the apostle, prophet, um, the shepherd, the teacher, and the evangelist. They are the fivefold ministries who are supposed to build up the body of Christ. And then we have other servants of God, of course. Um, but not everybody who is sent to places are apostles. You can be an evangelist and be sent. And you can be a teacher, prophetic teacher. You don't have to be an apostle to be sent. I think there is significant things with being an apostle. Um, first of all, they had to see Jesus. They all saw Jesus. It says that among the disciples, Jesus picked out 12 to be the apostles. And he anointed them to that mission. Um, actually, it's a little important, but it's not that important because today many people are very focused on labels too much. As if it matters in the big picture, it does not. What matters is that we have our hearts right with Christ and that we are following him in our daily life and everything he's he's uh, telling us to do. That is the most important thing, is to be his servant. Whether your name this or that doesn't change your position in front of God. We're all his children. But I think why God wants uh, us to know if we have such a mantle, uh, to grow into a mantle like that, um, I think he wants those people to know because of the function of that mantle, not to run around with a, a little card that says, I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet. You don't have to tell. That's the stupidest thing I ever know. It's when people are announcing themselves with those titles. Why do you do that? You don't have to do it. I'm a prophet. We will see. If you're a prophet, you don't have to tell. I don't see uh, so many of the prophets in the Bible doing that, presenting themselves as prophets. Like John, for example, he never said he was a prophet. And he was one of the greatest prophets according to Jesus. So uh, I, I think God wants us, if you are one of the five, God wants you to know in a certain time in your life for you to understand the function and take your calling seriously and, and know the authority that is given to you in that function. Um, that I think is more important. But to brag about the title, to argue if you are this or that, that's stupid. That's childish and it's actually a little flesh. It's trying to rank yourself like you are superior, but other people are not that superior. 
is foolishness, to be honest with you. And we are not there, right? So let's go back to the, the scent thing. You see Barnabas and, and Simon, they were called to a certain place. And it says that the Holy Spirit sent them. Um, now it was Saul. Paul, well, he was Saul first. <laughs> Uh, so they were called to a mission uh, by the Holy Spirit. And what did they do before they went there? They prepared. There's a preparation before you are going out somewhere. You need to pray a lot and you need to be led by the Holy Spirit. You need to have confirmation that it is right. And, and it's very wise to fast too. I always do that when I travel. Uh, I fast when God tells me to fast. He tells me how many days I should fast and for a certain city or a nation. And then I, I need to do it because it's my protection and I need to be spiritual, spiritually prepared. And it says here in Acts 13, then, they, then when they had fasted, uh, Barnabas and Saul... Uh, and prayed and then they laid hands on them the congregation laid hands on them their closest you know their tribe they laid hands on them and sent them away and i believe that it's the best thing you can have is a church on your back if you are sent out that you have people if you don't have a church you need to find some intercessors that will stand in the gap for you, that will be like a shield in the spirit for you. Sometimes when I've been traveling, uh, especially to America, I have been there just by myself. I have not always had a church behind me. So God tell me to to, to stir up intercessors, to, to call people to be interceding for me. So I always have like 10, 15, maybe more people praying for me when I'm out there because it's important. You cannot do everything alone, especially not, uh, you know, when you come against stuff, when you travel, because I'm telling you something. Sometimes when I am going to like, for example, LA, it's a very hard place. I know when God says it's time to go, sometimes it's not in my schedule. I'm planning to do something else, but then God turn it and say, no, you're going there now. <clears throat> and then I have a thing with God. It's my thing that it needs to, I need to have it confirmed several times. And then uh, I need all the practical things to be perfect you know like that i can rent out my apartment easy and there are people easy fixing a place for me over there bam 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 with the tickets you know money come in all that stuff is is like a flow for me every time um and then sometimes when i've been there uh twice actually when i've been there i've been there many times but those two last times i've been there uh because i always think it's going to continue the same work i'm doing last time i was there but then god is shifting it he's changing it and 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 then i don't see the whole picture because we don't we just see little puzzle pieces of what we are doing and over years, we may see a bigger picture of what we actually did. So, um, uh, the last two times I've been there, I've been just inside a house praying a lot. Interceding, praying, standing in the gap, fasting, doing warfare, praying a lot. It's very peaceful where I am, but I could feel the pressure. I could feel the pressure the moment I enter into the airport because that is it's the border. 
So it's also like it's like a spiritual border also. So you could feel the pressure, the demonic pressure that is huge over LA. And sometimes they try to make it difficult for me to not let me in there and stuff. But you know that you are on a mission for God. So, you know, you, you calm, you peaceful. And they can, you know, scream and shout and try to scare you and threaten to send you back and stuff like that. And other things that also can happen when you are on a mission is that people that doesn't understand your walk with God, they can all of a sudden call you because they're looking at your life from the outside. So they don't get it. And they're trying to be a nice friend uh, because they don't want you to be hurt. And then they say like, hey, uh, I don't feel that this is the right timing for you. I don't feel that you should go there. Or when I'm there, some people say, you should go home. You shouldn't be here. And it's so strange to me because I will never, never, ever say something like that to any person who are sent by God to a certain city. It's not my business. I trust that that person has heard from God. I can't inter intervene in that and try to say, hey, you should go home. It's control. And, and it's, it's, it's a dominating spirit. And sometimes the enemy can use people that are close to us that tries to get us out of that uh, mission we are going into. And, and because you know that you will not listen to the enemy, the accuser, but if there come a Christian person trying to bake it into a prophetic word that you should not go to that city or that place, um, that is more sensitive. Then you listen for five minutes, but then you go, no, God is not talking like this. So you need to know how God speaks. You need to know how he's going to talk to you, how he confirms when he's sending you to a place. Doesn't even, it doesn't have to be into another nation. It can be in your same nation you are in right now. Just another city, another place, another church, whatever, another house. But there will always be obstacles a resistance against your mission, so you know. So that is also something you need to be prepared for. You need to prepare spiritually by fasting, praying, and know that you heard from God. And then you need to trust God for what he has for you there. And when I've been there the last times, I just basically been on my knees in prayer for weeks. And from the outside, that can seem quite crazy to people. Why? People have even said that to me here. Hey, you could do that prayer here. You don't have to go over the Atlantic Ocean to pray. Yes, I do. You see, I am coming in with an anointing. I know what God has put on me. And I'm coming in as a missionary into that demonic field. And there's a difference because Bible says that wherever you set your foot on, is it's yours. So sometimes we need to be physically in that place and just pray. And maybe you carry something. Maybe you carry a territorial anointing that change circumstances. So when you come there, it, it shifts in the atmosphere, but then you will also feel um, a confrontation in the spirit. I felt it very strong. Last time, uh, the, the last time I was there, it was very, very strong demonic resistance against me. And I was basically in a house praying the time before that, I was preaching uh, and, uh, you know, delivering people and stuff like that. And this time, I was basically in the house praying. Well, we had this quarantine too. So, but still, I knew that God wanted me to be there. 
just laying on that floor in the United States, praying for the presidents, praying for the nation, fasting for weeks, and you're standing in the gap and repenting on behalf of the sins, nation, and so on. And it seems maybe ridiculous to you. And crazy, and what is, he, what is she doing? I mean, but I'm doing something in the spirit. See, I know God a little bit, so I trust every move he shows me. And he can show me to do little strange things like that. I'll tell you another prophetic thing I used to do back in the days when I was praying to get into the United States. And it was shut for me for 20 years. That's hard. If you call to a nation and you blocked out for 20 years, it's hard to keep that faith up and believe it's still God. But God somehow kept it alive in my spirit, you know. If it's really God, it's going to happen. But he has his time schedule and that you need to trust. So I bought a map over America I put oil on the map and I laid on the map and, and and prayed for hours over every state I walked around the American Embassy speaking in tongues by myself you know crazy stuff but I felt led because sometimes it's like a demonstration in the spirit what you're doing and you do it by faith to break down strongholds in the spirit that you can't see. So every time I'm there, I know, I know that I'm, I'm, I'm pounding on that wall, as I said many times, and eventually it will fall down. But I always meet people that God has uh, planned for me. God can send you to a nation to meet one person. Yeah, he can. It's important to that person. So it's important, no matter how it looks like people, just trust God and be obedient in the small things he show you because the big is in the little. It may look little what I'm doing sometimes by praying. Praying is very strong thing to do. Some of the biggest breakthroughs on this planet has happened from prison cells and hospital rooms where people have been laying in there, locked in these houses, in these rooms, not able to get out, praying. Some of the biggest breakthroughs on this earth has happened through those rooms, just so you know. So don't underestimate if God sends you to a pray place to just to pray. It's very, very powerful. And it is a difference because when you're there, you are facing those powers, that darkness that's over that nation and that city. And you are, you are confronting that. You're coming in with your anointing into that territory in the spirit that's over that nation. You don't feel that pressure that is over, for example, LA here. I could pray for America here every day. It would not be the same because I don't feel the pressure here. But when I'm there, I'm in a war zone. And when you are on a mission field, you are going straight to war. Okay? Some wars are more heavy than others. And you are sent into a battlefield together with God and hundreds of angels. So that's why you need to know that uh, this is God. He's going to send me now. I'm going there. And you don't need to know how and when. And, you know, God will tell you what to do when you're there. Maybe you don't know so much. You just, you just go there by a word. And then God will show you and open up for you and confirm when you're there what you're going to do. And don't be, don't be scared if you think it's little, that you wonder, hey, when am I going to stand and preach in these big auditoriums or big stadiums? When is that going to happen? That's what I picture in my mind here. And you just send me that far to, to, to pray or to be in some small groups in people's houses. 
if you see the apostles back in the back in the days the book of acts they were going and doing different missions to one and one they were together sometimes two sometimes three sometimes a little group and then they were led by the holy spirit to meet certain people all the time and then they met uh, in a bigger crowd where they were praising God and sharing testimonies. You don't see big stadiums there or, you know, so can you please don't have so many thoughts about how God is going to do it, how he's going to do it when he's using you. Just trust him. So they were sent out by the Holy Spirit and... And that's what we need to be. We need to be sent out by God, not by ourselves. We don't go there because I want to go there now. You need to ask God if it's the right timing. And he can stop you. He have thousands of ways to stop you. Um, to not make that happen. Sometimes, uh, also, when I have been led by God, it's still been hard with some practical things. I've been moved around a lot and it looked like, oh, it's not blessed. You shouldn't be here. But I know it's God, people. So I don't listen to those people that are talking and judging what I'm doing from the outside because I know it's God. And I say that with all humbleness. But I know God and I know how he stops me too. And when he doesn't stop me and confirm I go on that word and I don't care what people are saying around me because I know that God has sent me because I feel the peace. Okay? Um, yeah. John the Baptist also was sent. Many people in the Bible are sent by the Holy Spirit. We've been sent out to ministries. We've been sent out to different churches, to places. That's why I said to you guys that I don't have holiday. I, I don't think I'm going to go home, have some holiday. I'm, I'm on mission. I'm ready, you know. Right now I'm resting, praying and listening, you know, and need to charge my batteries a little bit because I've been in the war over there. But I'm, I'm still on a mission here, you know, with the people that I meet and talk to. Uh, it, it continues. It never stops. Isn't that exciting? So God is sending us. Moses was sent by God. Jeremiah was sent in the Old Testament. He, God said to him, don't say that you are young. Go to every person I send you. And speak my word. Um, so it's important to be prepared. Uh, and know what you are up against. And, and, and as long as you feel the peace of God on the inside. Don't, don't listen to those people who are trying to confuse you. Uh, and, 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 and think they know more about your life than you. They think they know how God speaks to you more than yourself, because they don't. You hear from God. And you will know when God says no or yes. Okay? There will always be people interfering in our lives from family to close friends who doesn't understand our walk. If you have a special walk, they will question Oh, you maybe should just stay home, have a regular job. This doesn't seem like a God idea. God will show you, my friend, if there is a God idea or a dumb idea or just a good idea. God will show you. Be certain of it. And he will send you places and you are going to be obedient, right? You're going to be obedient to his voice. If he says to you, go to the neighbors uh, tomorrow, bring some flowers and pray for that person. See, we can develop our gifts and listen more to practice, to hear, to get word of knowledge. 
where you are planted, where you're living. And God can lead you like he led the apostles. Imagine that life, yes, they paid the big price for it. So you have to be willing to go through persecution, misunderstanding, people talking bad about you, people leaving you, think you're crazy, don't, don't, don't understand what you're doing. You have to go through all of that and a lot of loneliness. But my God is worth the price. It's worth the price. It is. And you will see what God has put over your life. How awesome it is when he placed you there. How you change the atmosphere with the anointing that you carry. How he send you into people. Bam, they get delivered. I mean... If we all do what God has called us to do in this life, we will see miracles every day because that's how the miracles are being triggered. It comes from our obedience. We listen, we pray, we hear God's voice, we obey and we do it. And then you see the move of God. It's not awesome. Yeah. So that's the life we have with Christ, right? Oh, I love the bird singing. Oh, so quiet there. Have a wonderful evening, Thursday night. Enjoy life. Be happy. You're alive. You're blessed. Talk to God. Give Him praise. Give Him thanks. Worship Him. And use your time. This is a luxury time that we are locked in in different places. It is. It's a luxury time where we can sit with the feet of God, with his throne, and listen and get a lot of revelation and healing and deliverance and everything we need for the next phase. The next phase in the heavenly program is right around the corner, people. So we need to be ready. We need to be ready. Okay? God bless you. I talk to you hopefully tomorrow. Okay? Bye.